Agricultural technology is a well-established and an important UK sector. The entire agri-food supply chain from agriculture to final retail and catering is estimated approximately at £96 billion sterling per annum, worth some 7% of GDP and is the largest manufacturing sector as such in the UK, employing some 3.8 million people. The direct contribution from production, agriculture and fisheries is worth approximately £10 billion per annum. The Agricultural Engineers Association reported uh, last year that its overall turnover of its members, both manufacturers and suppliers, was some £4.6 billion to the UK. The exports of tractors and agricultural machinery and outdoor power equipment accounted for some £2 billion. The UK market, according to the Institution of Agricultural Engineers, is estimated at somewhere between 4 and 5% of global sales, with the growing global agricultural engineering machinery sector worth an estimated £80, million, 80 billion pounds per annum. This offers the UK tremendous export potential, providing the appropriate technology can be developed. With global challenges as rising populations, climate change and land shortages, the challenge is to support the contribution of agri-tech at every stage in the food supply chain. From the planting uh, to the harvesting of crops, post-harvest technology, the breeding of livestock and the treatment of disease, the transport of goods and managing commercial sales. Engineering innovations will help all the way along that critical agri-food chain. <coughs> I would like to take this chance to highlight two of the Academy's recent works in the area. This year saw the, the first inaugural Africa Prize for, innovation, for Agricultural Innovation. One of the runners-up was Musanga Salawa from the Zambian Agricultural Research Institute for uh, an environmentally friendly precision fertilizer applicator. <coughs> this will have a tremendous impact on the rural and small-scale uh, farms in sub-Saharan Africa. He was awarded six months of mentoring and training from the Academy and £10,000 towards his business development. In addition, I would like to draw to your attention uh, the recent article on precision agriculture which, will be in, which is currently in the Academy's uh, publication in Genia. The Government has also recognised the sector's importance and in 2013 launched its UK strategy for agricultural technologies. As part of this, the Government launched a £70 million Agritech Strategy uh, Catalyst Fund to support innovation. This is now on its fifth round of funding, having already supported many early stage, late stage and industrial research projects. In addition, £90 million was co-invested with industry to establish centres for agricultural innovation, the first of which on informatics will be the world's first big data centre of excellence in the whole agri-food uh, industry. It's my great pleasure now to introduce uh, Trevor Tyrrell, and Trevor will talk about efficient agricultural systems from machine to farm. Trevor is the uh, Chief Executive Officer of Class UK, and he joined uh, class after a period at, at Silso College uh, and uh, from, the farm, from the family farm in Ireland. Uh, as well as CEO of Class UK, he's also Director of Class Finance and Regional Director of the Class Export Division. As such, he's responsible for the class activities in Australia and New Zealand. Just because you haven't got much else to do, I guess, Trevor. That's it's my weekend you, job. That's yeah. a weekend <laughs> job. But over to you when everything is ready. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dick, and I hope it wasn't something in the water, but um, I've got mine just in case. So, Dick, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, and ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. 
Um, what I'd like to talk to you today is about efficient agricultural systems. These are known in the class company under our acronym EASY. And the real challenge, of course, is to make these high-tech electronic systems easy, not only for the operator, but of course for people like myself uh, who need to understand them. Um, because, of course, as most of you will know, these systems are anything but easy in themselves. I'll talk to you about the, tr the trends and challenges and the class easy solutions and try to bring it all together uh, in my summary at the end. So it was only a generation ago that farming looked like this and um, my own far father having famously ploughed with a team of horses uh, with everyone in the parish being able to hear every four-letter word as he shouted at them. Uh, perhaps an early form of telemetry. Today there are people who still think that farming should look like this uh, and probably some who think it actually does. But of course uh, times have changed and we're living in a world where farmers have to feed rapidly, a rapidly growing world population from a smaller agricultural land area with fewer people working on farms. A world where eating habits are changing rapidly to a more meat-based diet requiring more cereal crops and one where farms and machines are connected globally by mobile phone, by the internet and by satellites. This creates the need for ever larger machines with expectations for better connectivity and big data management. But when designing larger and more efficient machines, our engineers are also challenged by the physical and legal limitations that exist. Machines cannot necessarily become wider, taller, longer, and certainly not heavier if they are to be used in many of the traditional farming regions of the world. The solution is to use modern technology to make the machines and systems more efficient. The challenge is bringing the operators and the farm managers, as well as the dealers that provide the service, maintenance and repairs, along on the same journey at the same speed. Electronics and agribusiness is developing um, at a very much the same pace as in other industries. And I remember well 20 years ago when we launched the first combine harvester, our first combine harvester, that was controlled by a computer. We were expressly forbidden to tell any customer that there was a computer on board. Today, if we don't have a computer on board, then we wouldn't sell them at all. And today, connected machines, the Internet of Things, Farming 4.0, all mean that we're, means that we're managing a system of systems. And farm managers can make much more informed decisions with the data that they're presented with. And since the launch of the Lexian Combine in 1995 with our SEVIS computer management system, we have continued to lead the field in precision agriculture with yield mapping, telematics, and steering as key landmarks. Many of these innovations have won industry awards, and unlike some other manufacturers, class have been instrumental in promoting open systems and using ISOBUS technology to ensure compatibility between different manufacturers' systems. I was asked to comment today on the uptake of some of these technologies. A recent UK agri-data survey shows that 20% of all farms use GPS guidance or auto-steer on their tractors and combine harvesters. 14% use GPS variable rate for the sprayers or spreaders, and just 6% use combine GPS yield mapping. This, however, is growing fast, and with over 30% of all new class combines in 2015 uh, actively using telemetry with automatic yield measurement systems. One of our more recent uh, industry awards is for our Easy On Board app, which allows, I'm on the right page yet, yeah, which allows a tablet such as an iPad to be connected by Wi-Fi to the ISOBUS system on the tractor. This is then used as the main terminal to monitor, control and data log the tractor and the implement connected to it. This is a great example of customer demand influencing technology. Farmers told us very vocally that they didn't want expensive, bespoke computer terminals, but rather tablets which are cheap to replace very portable and have a host of other uses and benefits. So I'd like to look down in some detail at the class easy development strategy, our strategy for efficient agricultural systems. Our company in Germany that's specifically responsible for our easy products is called class e-systems. And in terms of R&D, the company is split into four main divisions, dealing with automation, steering, 
data management and interfaces. I'd now like to take each one in turn, starting with automation. And following the purchase of a small company in Denmark, uh, we were able to integrate 3D camera technology, which we saw earlier in the first presentation, into our process automation systems. And four key areas of development have been autofill, cam pilot, Kelty cam, and grain quality camera. Autofill, first of all, uh, is on a self-propelled forager, uh, is where we use eight separate points of reference uh, to monitor, being monitored by a 3D camera to automate the turn angle and flat position of the unloading chute in order to automatically fill different trailer sizes. The examples of the points of reference include the current hit point of the crop, the crop level in the trailer, and of course the trailer sides. With work rates in excess of 200 tons an hour, trailers are being filled in under five minutes, so the stress on the operator is significantly reduced, and filling accuracy is of course improved with less crop loss. Another example is Cam Pilot, which on the same machine uh, allows uh, a separate camera to automatically follow a variable grass swath in the field. The same technology is used in the Kelty Cam. As you can see in this uh, photograph, it does the same for a tractor when mechanically weeding a valuable vegetable crop. The 3D camera in this case can be programmed to see individual rows of plants or ridges in the soil. Uh, and use this data to steer the tractor at very, very slow forward speeds, where uh, GPS steering systems struggle to maintain accuracy. Finally, the grain quality camera uh, is the final 3D camera application currently, uh, which identifies broken and damaged grains in the crop sample. I'd like to present this as part of our CMOS automatic combine setting system, which is possibly our ultimate automation system on a machine today. CMOS Automatic monitors grain loss, returns, engine loading, intake capacity, and other areas of the machine to automatically take over the setting of the rotor speed and sieve settings on a combine harvester. This allows the operator to choose from one of four driving strategies on the machine, either maximum throughput, minimum fuel consumption, grain quality, or a balance of all three. In terms of grain quality, currently we only minimize the returns coming off the sieves and going back into the main drum. But we also show the operator images from the 3D camera of the broken grains. In the future, we want to integrate uh, these images to automate the drum speed and the concave settings to further optimize the, the grain quality. This, of course, is particularly important for crops used for human consumption, as well as reducing disease and deterioration during crop storage. Now, I said that one of our challenges is to bring the operator and manager uh, along in the same journey. And uh, yeah, tr perhaps try to show in this rather complex image uh, how uh, we answer the question or the statement from many operators that of course I can drive a combine harvester better than any computer. Uh, we can show the opposite and if I highlight here on the left hand side uh, the green box, uh, this area is where the computer was controlling the settings on the combine harvester. The red box is where the operator took control back later in the day. Time on the bottom axis and various uh, measurements on the, uh, the y-axis. So what you can see in the very top line above the green box um, is the total throughput tons per hour of the machine. And if I disappear that, the blue line, which you can see here, uh, hopefully just about see it, is the uh, settings for the sieves on the machine. And the computer, all the while the computer is uh, operating the machine, it's adjusting the bottom sieve to maximize the output of the machine. Once the operator takes over, what we see is that blue line uh, flat lines. So the operator typically on the combine not changing the setting throughout the course of the day, sometimes not even uh, throughout different crops, maybe not even changing it throughout the whole season. But in this case, flatlining the, uh, that particular setting, and as you can see above the red box, uh, the total throughput on the red line has decreased. So yes, we can prove that the operator can be beaten by a computer. Um, I guess one of the uh, big targets of this sort of system is to allow less experienced operators to maximize the output of the machine. What we do find in truth is that a more experienced operator can get even more from these systems. So whilst it does allow um, uh, different operators to get, different, uh, to get better results, 
at the best results is still where we have a good man in the seat. Our second development area is steering systems, uh, where, where the sensor can be a camera, it can be a satellite a sensor or a mechanical sensor. Uh, and a recent innovation in this area is auto-turn. Very simply, auto-turn clearly steers the, the machine uh, on the headland, but in this case, what we can also do is to automate the headland management. Therefore, when we integrate it with the headland management system on a tractor or the cutter bar of a combine, the machine will know very, very precisely exactly when to activate the headland management function as well as the steering uh, and operate 10 or more functions on a machine, including in this case front and rear lift, hydraulic activation and flow rate and power takeoff operation. Big data is coming to farming and as we all know from every business, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. But only those farm managers who appreciate that will benefit from this type of technology. In the example in this photograph, uh, the yield map from the combine has been created live online as the machine is driving uh, to be viewed in the farm office and the bales from the baler have their moisture, weight and the position recorded. Our latest in innovation in data management is telemetry or telematics as we call it for implements. We call that TONY and any ISOBUS controlled implement connected to a tractor <coughs> can have all its measurements recorded live onto a secure internet server allowing the farm manager, the local dealer, our regional support teams, as well as our engineers in the factories to monitor and manage the system through any connected device. The main customer benefit is generally an improvement in logistical operations, where large machines are often kept waiting due to poor logistical management on the farm. The final area for classes development is in the man-machine interface, so panels and displays. And we discussed earlier the use of a tablet connected by Wi-Fi to a tractor ISOBUS, and this has opened up the ability to write relatively low-cost apps to assist in field machine management. Now, we have two examples. One of this is field optimization, where the machine operator is given the most efficient route to complete his field operations depending on the working width of the machine and the size and shape of the field, even considering the gate entrance and exit points. Uh, another is a field view where the um, tractors can see where m multiple combines are positioned and which combine will need unloading next, hence minimizing the travel time around the field. So, how do we bring it all together and is it worthwhile? Uh, can a customer bring it all together, indeed, to improve work rates? Uh, one example we tried to show here, uh, per perhaps we can use the technology with an existing system to gain productivity uh, is uh, something that's becoming popular in the UK, more popular at the moment. We call it reduced traffic farming. Dick would call it controlled traffic farming, as the Australians do. Uh, our customers are not quite so anal, Dick, and uh, they're trying to do it a little bit more practically. So this system uses mainly existing technology, that's the key point, to reduce field traffic wheelings, hopefully to 20% or slightly less over the whole field, as opposed to controlled traffic, which targets 15% or less but at a far greater cost. Add some of the new technology that we've discussed and we see this particular customer in the UK is using a combination of cutter bar and unloading augers to get his machines in the right position, combined with RTK steering fitted with auto turn and using CMOS automatic, telematics and the field optimization and field view features to ensure that every seed, every spray operation and every machine is in the right place at the right time, doing the right job to minimize costs, maximize throughput, and provide traceability of the crop. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is easy. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Trevor. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Is there a question from the audience, please, for Trevor? I'm really glad there's no questions, Dick, well, I can't I've guarantee got an answer. I've got one on my would. sleeve, uh, as you might imagine. Trevor, when we met back in January, uh, you came out with an important statistic 
about the value of the bread, the beer, and everything that was produced, the rapeseed oil that was produced from one combine in a season. Would you like, can you remember what that figure was? Dick, I know too well probably, I use it in every uh, chance I get with the general public to show where agriculture is today in the general food chain. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's probably well known that a combine harvester today, a large combine, can harvest uh, enough wheat in one day to produce one million loaves of bread. But of course, we don't just work for one day. We, we operate for perhaps 10 days in, in bread making wheat, uh, and that could mean 10 million loaves of bread. Uh, most of the wheat harvest, maybe 80%, is used for uh, feed, for, for poultry, pigs, or, or beef. And uh, in one season, uh, one operator, one machine is producing enough uh, feed for probably 85 tons of steaks. Uh, so quite a few 69 steaks in there. Um, we don't just do wheat, we do barley for beer. And if you uh, uh, enjoy the tour of um, Green King Brewery, Dick, next time you're in Bury St. Edmunds, do the Green King Brewery tour. They'll tell you that in one week they produce three and a half million pints of IPA from just 500 tons of barley. So one man in one day with one machine is keeping Green King going for a week and probably London for, well, perhaps lunchtime anyway. Um, so yeah, add to that all the other food crops that are associated with, with cereal crops or common harvesters and one man, one machine, one big machine working well. Uh, when, you, when those foodstuffs hit the supermarket shelves, it uh, could be 20 million pounds worth uh, that we're providing. And when you think, of course, probably 10,000 uh, operators with 10,000 combine harvesters in the UK is providing an awful lot of the food into the beginning of the food chain, which eventually will feed, what, 65% of the, of the food needs for 60 million people. I think it's quite an achievement. Simon, you have a question. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you mentioned the... Can you please give your, your name and uh, affiliation? Uh, Simon Blackmore, uh, Harper Adams University. Um, Trevor, you mentioned a lot of uh, interesting new technologies uh, in the commercial sector on your machines. Would you care to uh, give us an indication as to the farmer's attitude and why they want to adopt these new technologies? Uh, Simon, a very good question and of course it varies tremendously. Um, I think the, the uptake that we see is generally with the farms that are very business oriented, particularly what is the farm manager. Uh, who is responsible for the business in terms of running a real business. An owner operator, family farmer sitting on his machine, of course, he processes a lot of data himself uh, and the uptake is far less in that case. Um, I think uh, if, if we use the 80-20 rule that 80% 80, 80 of the uh, crops are being produced by 20% of the farmers, probably not quite true, but uh, maybe not far away, uh, it's those 20% uh, of farmers who are the most efficient and producing probably the highest yields, uh, and where this sort of uh, equipment, the uptake is, is far higher. Um, yeah, the feedback from those guys is bring it on, give us more. Uh, the feedback from, uh, let's say, more traditional farmer customers uh, is, well, they don't understand it, and we do struggle. We have a, a, a real bottleneck or a, um, a brick wall in getting over some of the benefits of, of that technology. I think it will take another generation. I think so. And I think equally many people ask, when will the first driverless machines really be uh, commercially available? Uh, the point I made earlier that a good operator in a machine can get much more out of these technologies than an average one, uh, I think highlights the fact that we still need an operator not only to get the machine from the farm to the field, but equally to make the very best of it in the field when it's there. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Please, here. Hi, my name is Gary Atkinson from Arm uh, in Cambridge. Uh, it's been well reported about some other manufacturers hanging on to the data of, that's produced by a lot of these machines and it cre creates that tension with farmers. You mentioned about using open systems. So do you give a farmer full visibility of all the data your machines create or just the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the yield information? Good question. Um, in, pr in principle, yes, except for the... Uh, let's say detailed software error codes. We, we will report an error code. It's probably, we believe, not within the farmer's ability to repair software electrical systems. So that information is reserved for the dealer. But anything that relates to the crop or the general machine management, fully available. So at everything that we see on this telematic system, the customer can see. We can only access further data with his permission 
by either plugging in to the machine or if we access it remotely, uh, the operator has to give the OK on the computer screen to say that we can actually access that machine. So we do try, and particularly being a German company, German data protection laws are quite stringent. Some of the data is held in Germany. We have to abide by all the legislation. Tim, just behind you is a microphone. I'm not a control traffic farming expert. Here we go. <laughs> I must take you to task about your definition of control traffic farming not 15% or less, it's confining all traffic to the least possible area of permanent traffic lanes. Reduced traffic is something quite different. So please take that in. I guess it depends, depends on the uh, particular operation, Tim, of course. Yes. But, uh, yeah, in a combine so. harvester operation. I'd just take you to task on that one. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Thank sure you we'll catch up later, Tim. Thank you very much, Tim. One last question here, Callum. I'm not sure I'll need a microphone. Uh, fascinating talk. Thank you very much. Um, you mentioned your adoption of the ISOBUS system. I just wonder if you care to elaborate and give us a clue as to the extent to which other manufacturers will be equally um, open with, uh, with the adoption of that technology, and if not, how we get around the whole compatibility connectivity uh, challenge that, that faces every farmer. Uh, good question, and uh, thanks for that. I think uh, most manufacturers today are working within the ISOBUS standard whatever that means or is, it's not uh, maybe 100% clear or 100% compatible within itself. Uh, however, um, there are then uh, a number of manufacturers who uh, would rather their data, their information remains proprietary to their machine. And they're coming under increased pressure and we see those, or that particular one, uh, let's say opening up and, and joining more into the open network. Very few farmers want to be locked into one brand or one color for their entire precision farming circle. And uh, I think the future, driven by customer demand, will be more open systems and more connectivity. ISOBUS being probably the only way to achieve that. We have to go there, we have to be there. Thank you very much, Trevor. Thank okay. you very much thank indeed you very for much. the presentation and, and our questions.